So this entire chapter is going to be over quadratic functions. Section 5.1 was all about how to graph them. There were three types. Three types of forms we're going to see quadratic functions in. Standard form, vertex form, intercept form, which we will go through. But there are three things we're going to need to find during this process. Three things we're going to need to find. And, by the way, it's not going to be particularly in the order that we write it up because depending on the form of the equation depends on what do we find first. One of these items is the vertex. Another item is the axis of symmetry. And the last item is determining shape. Is it going up? Is My bad. Is it pointing up? Are both arrows pointing down? Is it skinny? Is it wide? And so on. Standard form. In order to find the vertex, we have to use the following formula. So in standard form, we have to use this formula. Opposite of B over 2A for the x-coordinate. And then plug that in. F of negative B over 2A. Axis of symmetry uses that x coordinate. So that's why it says x equals that opposite of b over 2a. I'm going to use that for the line of symmetry. And it's a vertical line. That's why it says x equals opposite of b over 2a. Then the shape is determined by a t chart, choosing x coordinates around the vertex and connect, and connect the points. You may want to put a little star down here. Whenever we choose x coordinates, we're going to make sure not only are they around the vertex, also on the same side of the axis of symmetry. They have to be on the same side of the axis of symmetry. So your first example, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 11. You guys already have the steps on your guided notes, but I'm going to put the steps off to the side. Very first thing in, when I see standard form, I'm going to immediately try to find the vertex using that formula. The x coordinate is going to be opposite of b over 2a. So notice how opposite of b, b is technically negative 6. So that's why I put it in like this. We just talked about how the leading coefficient is not visible, but we realize it's a 1. It can't be a 0. Here's why. If it was 0 times x squared, because that's what it would mean if there was a 0 here. 0 times x squared, wait a second. 0 times x squared means there would be no quadratic term. This would go away, and then we're no longer left with a parabola. This wouldn't create a parabola, it'd be a line. All right, so we complete that algebra and plug it in. I'm going to have to plug 3 into the original equation. So we plug 3 into the original equation, and now it's arithmetic, like what we typically call order of operations. We get the answer to be 2, and I'm going to put 2 in blue in my vertex. Those of you taking notes, okay, so purple typically symbolizes my pencil, and then red symbolizes anything I need to substitute. Blue is going to be like third thoughts or second thoughts. We had to go through this entire process to realize that the y-coordinate was 2. If I read my notes and I realized this is all written in pencil, I may not understand where the 2 came from. The 2 came from the end. So if you want these guys in the same color, this last 2 and then that 2, that might be helpful. And we graph it should be able to immediately graph my axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry should be an easy point on that quiz. Shape is determined by choosing x coordinates around the vertex and connect the points. So what we do, we set up a T chart. We're going to choose x coordinates around the vertex's x coordinate, but we make sure that they're on the same side of the axis of symmetry. So let's choose. So when we plug in 4, we get an output of 3. I'm going to put 3 in red because we had to get that value after substituting 4 into the equation. So when we plug in 5, the output became 6, and we're going to graph it. Graph each one of those. And then I'm going to put in blue because this is a second thought. 
I'm going to put in blue their reflections on the other side of that axis of symmetry. Putting in blue. So the other side, connecting the points. There we go. New form. Vertex form. Vertex form. By the way, on your guided notes, I believe you have a box with a question mark in it for H. For some reason, printer does not like H ever, ever, especially for my computer. It's like some kind of hiccup. I don't understand. But this should be an H because, wait a second, vertex form, meaning it should spit out the vertex. My bad. You should be able to interpret what the vertex is from this form. No algebra or no arithmetic necessary. By the way, we've also seen an A in the previous form, that leading coefficient. If that leading coefficient is positive, <coughs> we're pointing up. If the leading coefficient is negative, we're down. So vertex is going to be HK. It's going to be HK. Whatever's in the formula. If there's a positive number here, I'm going to make it negative when I talk about the x-coordinate of the vertex. Uh, k, whatever k is, I keep its sign. Here's where the mnemonic device, H, has to change its sign. K keeps its sign. If you want a mnemonic device. Otherwise, you just look at the form, realize, okay, vertex form, whatever's in this position, I'm going to switch its sign. Whatever's in this position, I keep it sign. Axis symmetry is going to run right through that vertex at x equals h. And the shape is found exactly like the previous strategy. So let's go to this example. Y equals a time, or for vertex form, you already have this example written down, and I'm going to reference our steps from the previous slide. You already have this down. You don't have to recopy it. Uh, but the vertex should be immediately spat out from looking at that. Vertex is 1, negative 3. The H or the X coordinate changes the sign. The K or the Y coordinate keeps its sign. So that means the axis of symmetry is going to run through that vertex. So I graph 1, negative 3. Here's my vertex. And I immediately start... Graphing my axis of symmetry. To determine shape, we're going to do it similarly as before. I'm going to use the T-chart, and I'm going to find x-coordinates around the vertex that uh, are on the same side of the axis of symmetry, so I don't have to do double dose of the work. So we could try 2, 3. Going to plug in 2, going to plug in 3. So when we plug in 2, we end up with negative 2.5. When we plug in 3, we end with negative 1. Let's plot those points. Notice that when I plot 2, comma, negative 2.5 or negative 2.5, you have to go down to negative 2 and then a half step more. Sometimes people, uh, like, retract their steps. Don't do that. Don't be one of them. And then we find their reflections on the other side of the axis of symmetry. And voila, we've got our five full points. Shabam. Last form. Notice how we still have an A. That leading coefficient is going to tell us if it's positive, we're pointing up. If it's negative, we're pointing down or opening down, depending on what Mr. Schroeder said. But this is an intercept form. That means the order is going to be different. It's going to spit out the intercepts first. I'm going to use the intercepts to figure out where the axis of symmetry is, which will help me find the vertex and so on. Here we go. To find the intercepts, we're going to use the equation and use the opposites. We're going to have an x-intercept at P, and then we'll have an x-intercept at Q. The axis of symmetry is going to be located in the middle of the intercepts. You may use this equation if you want to, but some of you can use your, just your common sense, like, okay, where's this, where are the x-intercepts? My axis of symmetry has to be right in between them. Then we will use that x-coordinate 
as part of our vertex and plug it in. Last example, which is wrong on your sheet of notes. Your last example is wrong. It should be y equals the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 3. Again, I'm putting up my steps over here. So from the equation, I should immediately be able to identify the intercepts. One of my x-coordinates is negative 1, 0. Similarly, the other x-coordinate is going to be the opposite of 3, negative 3, 0. I'm going to immediately plot them and find the axis of symmetry in between them. Negative 2 is right in between them, axis of symmetry. So that is going to be part of my vertex. My vertex x-coordinate is 2, and then I'm going to plug it in. So my bad, x-coordinate should be negative 2. Let's, let's try that. So vertex, negative 2, negative 1. And then wait a second. One of the requirements on this quiz is to have 5 points. So like before, let's use a little t-chart. But now let's just plug in another coordinate. Uh, we could plug in 0. Plug in the x-coordinate of 0. So the y-intercept is 0, 3. Uh, and then we map it to the other side. Wait a second, I'm going to put that in blue because it's a reflection. That was a second thought. And then we try to connect our points with the best of our ability to make it look somewhat pretty. That's not pretty. That's uh, not pretty. Mm -mm. And then we're